Hey, this is Anya Winans with the Marketing X Files, and you are watching the Best Practices Show. Hey guys, thanks for watching the Best Practices Show, where we take a look at the best business practices from the best dental practices all over the world. And if you're growing a restorative practice or even a specialty practice, one of the things that you're always looking for is the right patient and maybe some of those more comprehensive cases. And I've got one of the world's experts on today, Zanya Wines. You do not want to miss this. This is part of our special series, The X Files with Zanya. And I'll just say this out loud. She's one of our favorite people in dentistry, one of our trusted experts. She's the person I go to when it comes to marketing. So if you're pulling your hair out, which I don't have any left, you on this whole marketing thing, you're going to want to uh, tune into this one. So do me a favor, grab a pen and hit the share button. You're going to love this. Now, before we get started, a couple show notes. We are shooting this live on Facebook like we always do. So if you're watching this live and you have a couple questions, Add them to the feed and I'll dish them to Zanya while we have her on the show live. Or if you're watching them later on and you still have questions, continue to add them to the feed and we'll do our best to give you the answers you need because we want you to get the most out of this. Feel free to share these with your team too. I hear it all the time. People are like, well, a doctor gets great education, but they don't share any of this with their team. This is really easy, consumable. It's just pressing your thumb and share it with your team. Great way to do it. Now, also keep sending us suggestions for shows. Love, love, love the suggestions you guys are sending us. We're lining them up, doing the best we can. And the shares, we're up over 39,000 followers and over 150,000 of you have vis visited us in iTunes. And I don't have anything to say other than thank you. So thank you guys for all that. Now, my guest today, Zani, you and I go way back, like years ago. As I was looking for a marketing solution, people were like, uh, these people in marketing come and go and blah, blah, blah. But you've always been there. You're just, you're a great friend, great colleague, very knowledgeable. Now we're going to get into the topic, but you know, for people that are watching this and seeing you for the first time, I know who you are. A lot of viewers know who you are. Tell them who Zanya Winings is and what do you do? All right, so Zanya Winans, I am uh, the lucky owner of Golden Proportions Marketing, and um, the best thing that I can say that makes me qualified to talk about this stuff is 18 years in this business, not to mention 25 years being married to a dentist. Mm -hmm. So, you know, after 18 years, we have done everything when it comes to dental marketing, from the branding and strategic planning through all the digital marketing that's so hot right now. But my goal is really just to kind of share some of these super cool new ideas and techniques that are coming out, the underground stuff that dentists don't know about that are going to make them really successful. Yeah. And the last time, if you didn't watch the last show, you got to watch the last show because Google is going to roll out their new product here. And Zanya already gave us a heads up and how important it is to have these things transcribed and what's going to be searchable. So I'll create a little curiosity, go back and take a look at it. Now, Zadi, before we get into the topic, tell us why this is so important. When we're looking at untapping the secret to attracting bigger cases, give us kind of the state of the union and why this topic is so important. Absolutely. So there's a ton of things that people do in corporate dentistry or, well, just in corporate marketing in general and the dental world hasn't caught on to them. So I wanna make sure that some of these tactics and techniques come into play in dentistry. A lot of times dental marketing is meant to be this like shotgun, broad approach, reach as many people as humanly possible. But when you're going after big cases, big dollar cases like implants and cosmetic makeovers, even orthodontics, you need to be talking to a really specific audience. Mm -hmm. And in marketing, we call that a persona. So personas, the best way to kind of explain what it is and why this is so untapped in dentistry, personas are a way of sort of just literally getting inside the mind of the person that you're trying to target. It's a way of us putting a fictional representation to exactly who it is that you want to bring into your practice. Um, I mean, I don't know about you, Kirk, but have you seen anybody doing that kind of marketing right now in dentistry? 
No, not a lot. And, you know, in any business too, they call them avatars. They call them, you know, the ideal customer. And even in our business, we know exactly who our ideal type customer is. So as a dentist, I think one of the things that's important is just figure out who, who it is that you're trying to attract, because when you can put your marketing forward, I mean, that's, that's exactly who you're going to attract, right? Well, it is. But the thing is, most dental practices, they kind of have a single persona or avatar. They don't realize that you need a really targeted one for each type of big dollar procedure that you want to go after. I mean, if you think about it, who you would attract for an implant case is very, very different looking and feeling and what drives them than someone who's looking for orthodontics or a cosmetic case. Right. And if you do personas right, they can have a big, big impact on pretty much everything. Right. And you know, this is just kind of coming to my brain is that if you don't have these personas in place and you're only looking for the cheap patients, you know, free cleanings and all that, it kind of sends a conflicting message at times. Absolutely sends a conflicting message. Um, but those practices, those businesses that are doing personas and doing them right are, uh, if you want to exceed your revenue goals, I know everybody kind of sets their goals, like the new year's coming up and you're thinking, what am I going to do? How much revenue do I want to generate this year? How many types of cases? 71% of all businesses everywhere that actually blow their revenue goals out of the water are using personas in their marketing. And most practices, most businesses are going to have like three to four completely different personas because it's totally going to depend on who you're talking to and what you're trying to attract. And most dentists just use one if they're using one at all. Yeah. And I know you're going to walk us through this as far as what a persona is. Um, but using these personas obviously creates a lot more engagement. I mean, email and everything, right? Absolutely. If you use personas, um, some great statistics, you are going to increase your email open rate by two to 5%. Um, you can actually almost double your website traffic, double the number of leads that come into your practice because people are going to look at what you're doing and they're going to say, Oh my God, it's like, she's inside my head. She gets me. This yeah. is someone you get that emotional connection that most marketing just doesn't seem to tap into. And it just yeah. makes that sale so much easier. Yeah. And we have a great dentist that you work with and his name is Scott and you might know who he is, but he says, you know, what I did with Zanya and the Googles in creating this is that my marketing also creates a filter. Like there are people that go to my website and they don't want comprehensive dentistry. They tell us that, you know, and it, it works in that fashion too. Absolutely. Um, a really important thing is actually creating like a negative persona so that you know who you don't want to attract. I mean, I don't know a whole lot of doctors uh, that we work with, that you would work with, that are looking for that mass insurance patient, people who come from Medicaid, shoppers. Nobody wants them. They're a waste of your time. Right. You get your best people from the ones that are really, really targeted. So, yeah, knowing what you don't want and filtering them out is just as important. Right. So if I'm a young dentist watching this, I'm 32 and I've started my practice. Zanya, where do I start? Like, how do I create this persona or these personas for my practice? Okay, so there's four key steps to creating a persona. There's the, uh, the who, the what, the why, and the how. We're leaving the where out, basically. So the who starts with you really understanding who it is that you're trying to reach. So when you're creating a persona, one of the first things that they tell you to do is actually to name your persona. Because if you name it and you put a literal face on it, it helps you to say, I have an emotional connection to who this target is that I'm reaching. As a matter of fact, I think one of the best ways to do this is to um, actually look for a couple of patients in your practice that are exactly the kind of person that you want to bring in and then start to interview them to find out all of these things that we're going to go through and how to create a persona. So let's say you were looking to create a persona for someone who wanted implants. Mm -hmm. um, you would literally name that persona. We t I like I love alliteration because it helps you remember things. So I might call that persona Implant Irene. Mm -hmm. Now the name Irene already brings to mind. I'm not talking to a 30 year old, right? Right, right. And, and you have a vision in your mind already of who she is, so that as you're starting to review your marketing, you go, Oh, okay, I get this. Irene would actually respond to this. Mm -hmm. The first part of the who is understanding the demographics. Um, demographics, everybody understands demographics. There's the age that you're going after, 
Um, there's the income range, uh, socioeconomic status. I mean, income range is one thing, but depending on where you live, $100,000 goes a lot farther in some communities than others. So are we talking to blue collar? Are we talking to white collar? Um, people who are retired. Right. And then you have to define the other stuff, the geography, um, their education level. Do they just have a high school degree? Do they have a master's? So understanding that whole who uh, can really help you start to zero in on making sure that you're saying things literally in the right language for people. Yeah, and you've been so good. One of the things that you taught me along, you got to understand what's behind the metrics. Now we have so many metrics behind these patients. And if you're talking about implant Irene, a lot of dentists will just go to income level. Well, they don't understand. Like some of these people don't have incomes at all because they're retired, but they have tons of money, which is not going to show up on that particular report that you're looking for, for the person that's making the big dollars. So you really have to understand it a little bit deeper than just the initial layer. Absolutely. That's completely right. So once you kind of have that feel for who those people are, look for, let's say we're sticking with this implant scenario, look through some of the implant cases that you've done and find yourself three or four patients that really kind of fit that income level, socioeconomic status, that education you're going for, people who did the cases that you're looking to attract. And then I would ask them for permission to just sit down and have a conversation and really understand what drove them into your practice. And I'm going to give you some great questions that you can ask these people. It'll start to help you understand their mindset. You're literally getting inside their head so you can get inside the head of your future implant patient. Yeah. And I've heard other marketers say this, the key of really good marketing is to enter the conversation into somebody's head that they're already having. Mm -hmm. So understanding these people, like when I buy something and I want it really bad, I'm like, these people get me, like they really understand my problem and I'm totally in. And even how the copy's written, all that kind of stuff. So that's huge. Now I want to go through a couple more things. So you mentioned implant Irene. Give us a couple more like play on word names that you like as far as. Um, well, it just depends on what you want to go after. So uh, let's say you're trying to um, attract denture cases that you want to convert into implant retained dentures. It could be Denture Dave. I'm mm -hmm. thinking of somebody already who's kind of late 50s, early 60s, maybe um, could be a little bit older. Uh, let's say you have a, like a cosmetic case, someone that you're looking for more veneers and whitenings and just complete makeovers. You could call them makeover Marianne, or you need a name that is literally going to kind of fit the demographic of who you're going after. So there's generations with names, make sure you're kind of pairing them up. Right. And then something that's cool, and this is going to feel a little weird to some people, Go on the internet and find a photograph of somebody that feels like Irene or Dave or Marianne and literally kind of take that snapshot and put their name with it. And when you are creating your persona, you are looking at a person. This is not a fictional representation. You're now trying to get inside of Irene's head who's sitting in front of you. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Um, and it's so key, but a lot of people are like, they don't take the time to do this work and tr try to understand it. And it, I should say this too, because we've done this work with your help. This is not easy work. No. Like you don't just sit down one day and go, oh, here it is. It took us like several weeks to do it once you guided us through this exercise. Yeah, it definitely takes a little time, but once you've got it, you kind of created it for life. So if you have, you know, most businesses, three or four um, target personas are really all you need. There's, there's just a couple of them. So think about who those really big cases are that you're looking to attract. Um, and, you know, maybe one of your personas is general dentistry, and that's perfectly okay. Whatever that looks like, it's still going to have a target. But I would first identify who those three or four different types of personas are that you're going to create and then go through this stage first. Right. And if you just want to pick just one to get started with, pick the one that you think is going to give you the biggest response. Okay. Good start. Good start. So that's the who. Now you mentioned the what. So take us through the what. All right. So the what is what is their problem? And their problem is what's a problem in their mind, not what's a problem in your mind. So in your mind, you're probably thinking the problem with implant Irene is that she's missing teeth. 
Well, in Irene's mind, she already knows she's missing teeth. She's not stupid. She can look in the mirror. She sees that every day and it bothers her. But her real genuine pain point, the thing that is preventing her from getting this done up until this point, could be cost. The dreaded issue that nobody ever wants to actually discuss. If you can come right out and actually address her question about cost, you are now one step farther ahead because you've already answered her question before she even asked it. Yeah. Um, time is another big one. Maybe, you know, if you're going after those cosmetic cases, you're maybe targeting professionals who don't have a ton of time and they want to know how they're going to get the work done quickly. Um, pain is an obvious pain point. It's a literal pain point as well as an emotional one. But when you interview those couple of patients who represent this target persona, find out what their pain point was. Why were they willing to live with what they had for as long as they did? What was the thing that was holding them back until they finally couldn't take it anymore? And let's, let's drive home that pain point a little bit more. Yeah, I think it's really important what you said at the beginning, because what you think their problem is, they don't think, and I would guess one of the best things to do is ask these people mm -hmm. what their pain point is. What was what was the reason, the ultimate reason you did it? It's amazing when you listen to what they have to say. Exactly. Um, so the really cool thing about these interviews is you're probably going to find somebody who becomes the message for your persona quite literally. So you remember a couple of weeks ago when we did that uh, X-Files podcast on social proof? Yes. This is exactly what social proof is in action. It is a real human being articulating all of the problems that your prospective patient has, providing you with a social proof testimonial saying, here is how I overcame these problems and here is why this doctor is the right solution for you. Just going right at the what of the problem is a great way to use testimonials and social proof. Yeah, it's fantastic. So we've covered the who, the what, and then you mentioned the why. So take us through the why. All right. So the why. There's a lot of things that go into people's why am I ready to do this? And why are you the right doctor for me? Because I promise you, you are not the only dentist in town who is searching for implant patients. They got a lot of selection. I mean, maybe you understand who you're talking to, but now you really got to get into their decision-making process as we're bringing them kind of closer to that marketing funnel. Um, and there's a lot of things that cause somebody to trust you. And these kind of tie right into social proof as well. A big one is education. Um, if I am a patient who is willing to invest a significant sum of money, and this isn't as important with like general dentistry patients, but when you are coming to big dollar cases, they want to know that you are an expert in your field. So this is actually a great place to totally play up your education. Tell them where you went to graduate school, uh, where you got your dental degree, where you did your residency, and then any special degrees and certifications you have. I'm not usually like a big fan of a million different accreditations and letters after people's names, but this is a place where it counts. Oh, absolutely. You could also create videos and have your team do it too. I've watched so many team members interpret value for patients and say, you know, our doctor takes these many hours per year, which is 10 times the required amount of education in our state. As you can see, she's really committed to clinical excellence and they can describe the technology and it's not the technology, it's why we do it. And so all these layers create the credibility that patients ultimately, they want to know, you know, no different than going to a, a great farm to table restaurant that we were talking about. And when the server comes over, they describe the nature of the, why, you know, this, why you're going to pay so much at the end of the meal, basically for all this stuff. And you're like, Oh, that sounds great. But it really, it comes down to value interpretation. That's great. What else? What other things, you know, you, you mentioned um, the why and then there's trust factors like it's this is really about trust at the end of the day because people are still everyone's always looking for the shortcut. You know, how do I get the big dollar here? Bottom line is for somebody to let you put a burr to a tooth, they got to really trust you. They got to look in your eyes and go, I trust this person. Would you agree with that? Completely. And, and this is really where social proof also comes into play as well. Anything where you can use. Remember, we talked about trust icons. So if you can use like a literal logo of where you went to dental school 
or use um, it for anybody who has done those. And somebody just put a comment on the Social Proof uh, podcast that we did a couple of weeks ago that said, now I'm going to do the top docks of Hampton Roads somewhere down in Virginia because patients buy into that, even though it is a paid opportunity to right. be listed as a top doc, that is a trust factor that according to that patient who's looking at you, somebody else has already verified that you are a top dentist. Mm -hmm. So those kind of things, those degrees, the logos, um, they're looking at experience. This is where it's okay to be older. Um, it is all right to say, I've got 25 years worth of placing implants, or I have placed over a thousand implants on patients all across the state. That's going to tell me I am not going to be your guinea pig. That's a really big trust factor to me. I don't want to go to somebody who's just learning how to do this. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. You can also tell the story of other patients. You know, we've had patients come in just like you. And we do this every day and just calming, the calming effect of knowing that they're in a group and not alone in this, on this journey helps them a ton. Absolutely. Now, this is also where recommendations come into play. So people really trust reviews. There is a reason that there's so much review software out there because everybody wants to know what somebody else thinks of you. And yeah, there's professional accreditations, et cetera, but it's the real patient who's walked in your door, who's experienced you and your team and can write to that effect and say why you're so amazing. Yeah. So within that persona, like go online and read all of your reviews, find out what it is that other people are saying is why that they trust you. Yeah. You're gonna, like you literally do a word cloud. You could download all of those reviews that you have across everywhere in the industry and start to find those common words and phrases. Yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, I, I spend my weeks trying to convince people of reviews and you know how this battle goes. Some dentists are like, I don't need that. Now I'm just going to say this. If you're watching this, you're looking at reviews yourself every day. Now <laughs> it's Christmas season. And I'm telling you, like I'm looking at, I don't on Amazon. It's, it's really bad now on Amazon. I often don't even look at the product. I don't even look at the price. I'm looking at the rating and I already know if it's 3.2, I'm probably not going to buy it because there's going to be angry people and it's going to tell me the truth. But if it's four and a half or five, that's what everybody else has said. Guess what? And it's crazy how much it influences your buying decisions. Absolutely. It does. Now, there's also a couple of really good questions to ask yourself when you're creating these personas. One of them is, and this kind of goes right into the why, why is somebody going to finally break down and do this? Why have they been satisfied with things just the way they are? Mm -hmm. Because unless you're dealing with an emergency patient, someone has known that they are missing teeth or that their teeth have lots of gaps and are crooked or discolored. They've known that for a long time. And I promise you, most of them have been living with it for years. Right. Right. So why are they willing to just, they could just be willing to stick with it. So you've got to be able to address exactly why the status quo is not cool anymore. Yeah. And I'm going to beat this drum with you too. And one of the best ways to do this is not wait until they get to the dental chair is when somebody calls you, the two most important questions is why us and why now? Don't just schedule the patient, tell them how awesome, like get really deep. Why did you call us? Like, why'd you call us? And then why are you calling today? Like, I want to really understand. So many people are so quick to schedule the patient. What an incredible opportunity because there's something that made them pick up the phone. I mean, patients are like, yeah, I got two hours open. Probably should get a crown or something. You know what I mean? Like, they're <laughs> not thinking that. They're, you know, for me to make a phone call and make an appointment, there's a specific reason you made that call. Absolutely. And what ties right into that reason is what they're expecting to happen on the other end. What result in their mind are they expecting? In your mind, it might be a result of, I have now filled a hole in her mouth and she should be happy about that. But she may not care about functionality. If this is implant <clears throat> Irene, she might care about a result that she can now go out with friends at dinner and have fun and laugh and not feel self-conscious. Right. Figure out what that result is. And again, that that so much of that comes from actually interviewing real patients who have been through it. What was yeah. the result that they wanted before they even sat down in the chair? Absolutely. Absolutely. So we've covered the who, the what, the why. Now, do we get into the how? Is that the next one? 
Uh, we can totally get into the how. The how is how the heck are we going to reach these people? So now that you kind of have like this picture of who they are, you have to think about how they operate and how they interact with the world. Um, a big thing to think about are influencers. Influencers are anybody in this persona's life that they really care about their opinion. They respect them. So think about things like... Um, you mean uh, like Ellen and stuff like that? Like, <laughs> it's so funny. Like when you say influencers, like, you know, my wife will go, we're supposed to get this. I go, who told you that? She goes, Ellen. I'm like, Ellen DeGeneres? You know what I mean? Type of thing. Yeah, we you were know? talking the other day. Oh, yeah. Well, no, it's true because when somebody says something, we take that with a lot of clout, you know, whether it be a pastor, whether it be a coach, whether it be a community leader, whatever it is, or another doctor, like even in a referral process, when a doctor says that's the person you go to, that's that comes with huge clout. Absolutely. So those influencers, you got to know who is it that is putting, you know, a little bug in your target patient's ear to say, hey, I think this is a good idea. You can trust this doctor. They're fantastic. Uh, it'd be really, really ideal if that influencer was the patient who actually became your persona and your, your testimonial to show people why this is amazing. But it's, you know, whose opinion do they respect? It could be celebrities, but those are a heck of a lot harder for us to influence. So kind of think of people in your community. Right. Because a lot of them hang around with like-minded people that have the same core values. They come highly referred. They already know a lot about you. That's awesome. Now, also, too, you, you mentioned, like, once we, we talk about influencers, but let's talk about content formats. You know, like, let's get into the specific mediums because as many dentists, like, okay, once we figure that out, how do we connect? Because the, the trend is changing. It isn't like the old days where you just send a whole bunch of mailers and then it worked or whatever. It's, it's taken a new shape now. It is. And so this is where we're going to really kind of turn dental marketing on its head. What I find is doctors get really excited about oh, Facebook is the next big thing. This is where I need to be advertising. And then they try and create a message and force it to work there. Instead of saying, where does implant Irene go to get her information? Does she still read the newspaper? Mm -hmm. Is she reading the church bulletin? Does she listen to talk radio? So you got to figure out that where is she getting her information that she's being influenced by? Does she like to get emails? Does she watch videos? Uh, does she listen to podcasts? You got to know all of that instead of saying, I want to try this advertising method first and force fit, completely flip it on its head, figure out who you want to talk to and then where they go for their information. Yeah. Now I'm going to ask the obvious questions on you. How do I, how do I learn that when I'm talking to implant Irene? Well, because you are going to be interviewing um. half dozen of your own patients and you find out, are they technologically savvy? Do they spend a lot of time on Facebook? Do they actually like Instagram? What, right. Whatever it is where they get their information. Right. Now, you've taught us this on prior podcasts, but I'm going to just piggyback. This is one thing you taught me. When you ask a new patient that calls you, how did you hear about us? Don't just stay right there ask a secondary question, which is where else have you heard about us? Is there anywhere else that you've heard about us or anything else? Because they're going to say, well, my friend said, come to your office. Oh, by the way, I did check you out on Google. Oh, by the way, I did see that Facebook ad. Because if you ask them, they'll tell you, and it gives you really good research on which marketing is working. And people now have multiple stimulus. Very rarely do they ever just get one and make a phone call. If they get one, they're going to your Google site, then calling you type of thing. And you got to know that when they call, right? Absolutely, you do. I mean, it's that's the whole point of the marketing funnel is it's people don't just wake up one day and say, you know what, I'm going to pick up the phone and I'm going to call Dr. Winans and I'm going to get an implant placed. It starts with hearing your name out in the community and then, oops, they got an email from you and then they happen to see your commercial on TV and they go to your website and start to read reviews. There is a whole very targeted funnel process that gets them to that final phone call. But all they do is mention the last point of reference that they had which is most of the time going to be your website. Mm -hmm. And ultimately you could be disregarding all the things that it took to get them there in the first place. So you don't want to put all your eggs in that one basket. You got to know the layers, the umbrella that got them there. Yeah. And one of the layers is social media, which a lot of us are still trying to get our brains around. Where does that play a role in here as far as content formats? 
Um, well, social media, it's great to know where your, infl- or I'm sorry, where your target patient, your, your persona is getting interaction with social media. Are they someone who's a professional and they're really active on LinkedIn? Um, are they constantly on Facebook? Maybe they're younger and they're looking at Instagram or Snapchat. Um, maybe they're not social at all. But you got to know where they are. Actually, with social media, I just read this study yesterday. There is a 65% loss of trust in information coming from social media in the past year. Wait, 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 back up because that's kind of flying in the face of what we heard in the past. So 65% loss of trust because we're not we're not just so much relying on social media anymore. Well, because people are now aware of the fact that social media has been influenced by bots by um, nefarious people in other countries who have a bad agenda. No one knows what they can actually trust in what they're seeing. And so not to mention the fact that like Facebook had the whole Cambridge Analytica data scandal. No one is really, really confident about social media right now. So the more that you can do with this persona to make them feel comfortable that you know their influencers, what causes them to trust you, if you're conveying that, social media will have a lot more credibility. If you're just going right for the jugular with them, there's a lot greater chance that they're not going to trust you because they don't trust the medium that you're using. Yeah, that makes sense. You've always said, like, just be as authentic as possible. And then I've heard you say this, and we have, you know, we talked about is it's not so salesy. You don't want it to be salesy. Exactly. And people know when they're being marketed to. They, I mean, we, we all know stock photography, right? Everybody, mm-hmm. you can look at it and you see it's the same image that you used at the bank and the car wash, and now it's on my dental website. So when you are really personal with this, when you have talked to your patients and created this persona, it's not going to feel salesy. It's going to feel like someone has crept inside your head and is kind of listening in on what you're saying, which frankly, we feel like most marketing does these days anyway, but it's just way more personal and the more personal you make your marketing, the more likely you are to connect with your target. They'll love yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Any last thoughts that you have on persona? Like here's one. So Zani, now that I've done this work, take me through the next layer of it. Cause do I just market everywhere? Like what do I do with my persona once I figure this out? Okay. So once you figure out your persona, I'm going to guess that most doctors are not doing their own marketing. Um, So you need to make sure that whatever marketing is getting created for you, whether it's from our agency or anybody else's, that you kind of read it against the persona and make sure that you are hitting all of those sweet spots for that persona. And then ultimately from there, you figure out, you know, is this the right message and are we putting it in the right place? So we know a lot of doctors get totally stuck. They have no idea what to try, where to go, and they kind of want to take that shotgun approach. We have a really cool guide called uh, the Creative Marketing Ideas Guide, and I believe there's a link for it right below, Um, and it is going to help people with some new, fresh ideas for how they can apply these personas in their marketing. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. Now, um, before we wrap up, I want you, um, any last thoughts? And I also want you to mention, you guys are still doing your uh, contest, right? Thank you for reminding me. So we got a couple of days left. We are still taking entries. We are doing the 12 day 40 K basically $40,000 worth of dental marketing that we are giving away for free. We've had, I believe, eight or nine winners so far, but we still have, people can still enter, and I think the link is in this email or is in this uh, podcast as well, they can still enter to win a custom video shoot in their office, a year's worth of SEO, and a completely custom, from scratch, custom written, custom designed website for their practice. So anybody who wants to enter, throw your name in the pot because now we're at least nine people less in competition for you since we've already picked some winners. Yeah, it's a no-brainer. It's free to enter. There's no, you know, so got to try. Now, Zanya, for the benefit, I know there's going to be people that are listening to this on iTunes and they don't have the benefit of seeing this or seeing the links. I know they're going to want more information. Like, how can I reach out to you? Can you help me with the personas if I haven't been able to do this work? And I'll just say to you guys listening, we had no idea what this was. I mean, we tried it a couple of years ago and then Zanya walked us through a very specific exercise and we were able to nail it down and, and it's helped us so much. So if I need your help, how do I find you? Okay. So the first thing is to go to our website, which is goldenproportions.com. 
And there's actually a ton of great resources there um, just for marketing. There's free downloads for everybody. But if anyone wants, they can seriously just give me a call. I love helping people with marketing. So uh, the phone, if anybody's going to write it down, 570-742-5656. And reach out. I will help you create your persona or I'll take a look at your persona and say, does this actually match your message? Because what I really want is for doctors to be successful. Yeah, you do a great job of it. So I am so grateful for all that you do for us and all the people we coach. So stick around while we say goodbye to everybody else, Sonia. But thank you guys for watching the Best Practices Show. If you enjoyed it today, which I know you did, just do us a favor, hit the share button, share it with your friends. Keep sending us suggestions for shows that you want to see with Zanya and anyone else, and I'll get her back and we'll ask her some really hard questions and get, you know, get her expertise on some of these subjects. And until we see you next time, Keep watching the best practices show. You guys enjoy the rest of your day.